everyone. We are the Gratitude Girls. The Gratitude Girls are in the house. Hi, Lori. How are you? Hi, Catherine. I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. This is our Valentine's Day love month, right? Right. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a great idea to talk about that four-letter word that means a lot to us. You know, there's hope, there's love, there's life. There are so many things that are so important to us. And I'm really excited that you know, the way life turned out that tonight we get to interview each other on That's this okay. on this subject. I'll talk a little bit about where I am while you're setting up your tech. My name is Catherine Sour Myers. I'm broadcasting to you live tonight from beautiful Niagara on the Lake, Ontario, Canada. And uh, my friends call me Rara. So I like to walk in the room and say Rara's in the house. It really lifts me up. And I'm here with my amazing partner who does all the technology, Lori Delk Rizeki. And I now know exactly the town that you're in, Summerhill, Tennessee, because I keep saying Columbia, Tennessee, but that's not where your new house is, right? Right. Yeah. It's keep actually Spring Hill. Oh gosh, I was close enough. All right. So it spring, I'll pray. Next <laughs> show, I'll have it right. Spring Hill. We both move around so much. You have to sort of, you know, check our postal codes from time to time. So if you're sending us cards, make sure you know where to send them because we're not in the same address too long. Tonight, we're going to host this show, interview one another, and talk to you about the title of our show, How Love Has Found Us Again. But before we get into that title, we'll talk a little bit about why we're here, why Lori and I are doing this. Some people know because you're a loyal friend and family member and fan, if I might say, and you might be here for the first time. You might be wondering why are we here and how did this happen? Everybody loves a good story. So Lori tells it so well. Uh, I, I really like to listen to you tell it because I get to relive it. So can you share a little bit about why are we here as the Gratitude Girls? Sure, yeah. So Catherine and I are both part of a direct sales company called Send Out Cards. And in that company, the um, each year, the company at their international convention, they would have a theme for the year. And then at the convention, they would have an award for that theme. So way back in 2013, um, the theme for that year was gratitude. And so our CEO gets up on stage and this person is picked by the thousands of distributors and customers all over the world. And he starts telling all the different accolades and attributes about the person and calls Catherine up on stage. And so I'm in the back, I'm the techie one. So I'm like taking video, I'm like taking pictures and doing all this stuff. And then all of a sudden he says that, this year, for the very first time, there was a tie, and it was the only time ever since then, too. And so eventually, the our CEO talks about all the different things of that person, and I kept trying to figure out, who it is it? Who is it? Who is it? And ended up calling my name. And so Catherine and I literally met on stage in front of thousands of people, and it was kind of like, you know, kind of like the topic for our show, although we are talking more about relationships, personal relationships, but relationships can be come in all different kinds of ways, right? And so like they say, the love at first sight, it was like for us, it was like love at first sight for best friends, for friendship, for business partnership. And we knew that there, both of us were of the mindset that nothing happens just because there's a reason for everything. And so we decided to figure out what that reason was. And literally within minutes, Gratitude Girls was born. And way back then, we had no idea what we were going to do with it. But now, fast forward 11 plus years now, we've had shows every month. We've had coachings and trainings every week. We've had retreats, we have a book, 
we have a journal, we have trainings, we have private coaching and small group coaching and speaking engagements and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> We've traveled together. We, and, and I love when you tell that story because I remember, I remember it. And there's one thing you're very modest. Lori is not going to tell you this, but I'll tell you this about her. When I was on stage, I remember my knees sort of shaking, you know, holding your body up, thinking how surreal it was. And when I heard Lori's name mentioned, I remember wanting to meet Lori. I knew who she was. Everyone in the company knew who Lori was. She had received many recognitions for many things. This award is one of the long list of things that Lori has accomplished in send out cards, now promptings but she was awarded a recognition for giving the most gifts in the company. Now think about that. When I heard it, it really landed for me. It was who would be recognized for giving the most gifts? What does that mean? And I thought, I wonder what it would feel like to get a gift from Lori. Five minutes after we met, what do you think Lori does? She gives me a gift which I still have. I have it right behind me. And <laughs> it's it's a stuffed animal. It's an eagle. So when I met Lori, I felt the very same way. You talk about love and how it shows up for you and how things are aligned when someone meets your eyes, when you you lock gazes, when you're sharing a moment that you'll never forget but it feels so right that something bigger than you could imagine gets born, as Lori said. We didn't know, but the universe knew. So if someone ever says to you, trust the universe, it's because of my I am statements that I believe I was up there because I wrote in my I am statements that I would be up on stage with Cody Peatman. And I had wanted to be on stage and meet Lori not knowing that those two things would come together on that day, that's manifestation. So if you think about writing your affirmations, believing in them and believing, period, in yourself, things happen. And for us, it's gratitude girls. And tonight we want to extend that love story to our personal lives. So we're going to reveal some personal things about ourselves tonight. You may know about them, you may not. And if you don't, we are happy to, to share them with you. We may leave, leave out some names and some details, but we'll give you the general idea. And then if you want to know, <laughs> exactly. And if you want to know more, you just get with us and perhaps we'll get into it a little bit deeper. We thought we would talk to you tonight about love and how love has found us. Again, starting with us as our business entity and in our own lives. So think about that. Does love find you? Has it ever found you? Do you know what that is? And if you don't, we'll talk about it. And it might be something you want to see if you relate to. And if you have had love find you before, then you're going to be really excited because we're going to go right back to that happy place, no matter how it ended up. So let's talk about let's talk about love, Lori, because it's a great subject and it's a great time of year to talk about that. Love finds us, correct? Yeah, if you want it to. <laughs> you have to just be open to it. So for somebody who's listening tonight, of course, they want to hear the stories that we have. But if we think about it, I hear people talk about dating. Maybe they've never been married uh, or perhaps they've been married once before or they've been married a long time ago. And they say, you know, it's tough out there these days because when I was dating, it was a long time ago, the first time. And the world has changed. Way back when you'd get introduced to someone, you'd be chaperoned and you'd get to meet someone. And if you're lucky, you got to go to a dance maybe, or the prom. That was the way it started. You very rarely had a chance to take a complete stranger and bring them into your life. 
Mm -hmm. Yet the husband that I have and my soulmate, not my first husband, the husband that is for life, we met as complete strangers. We did not know each other. We had absolutely no knowledge of one another. And yet that phrase that you used, love at first sight. And I remember when you met <laughs> your husband, I remember we could talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I felt it, like I was there. Exactly. And because that's it. If you, if you want that love at first sight, and you want to know for a fact that it's that person forever. I mean, that was one thing. I didn't want to play the dating game, right? Like I didn't want to arrange marriage either. <laughs> but I did not want to play the dating game, but I wanted to be married again. And in the same thing, like you said, I mean, this dating nowadays it's totally different than dating when I first got married to my kid's dad, you know? And so I remember one time my daughter, my youngest daughter, when she started growing up, she asked me one day and she's like, so mom, you didn't have cell phones when you were dating, when you met dad and you were dating dad, did you? I was like, no. Nope. And you don't really like to talk on the phone, do you? And I was like, no, not really. I, you know, my mom raised us to, you get on the phone, you have a purpose, you get on the phone, you do your purpose and you get off the phone and you go on with your life or your day or whatever. Right. And so it was never, you get on the phone and sit and chat for hours. We didn't do that. And so she was like, and you were working like two jobs and in Nashville and lived in Columbia and had to drive so far. Like, how did you ever have time? Like, how did you get to know him in person, in real life when we saw each other? And yeah, it was not, it was once or twice a week. It wasn't like how it is nowadays where you talk and you text pretty much 24 seven and, you know, might sleep a little bit in there. But so you can go from knowing someone meet to married very quickly because you can get to know them really quickly if you ask the right questions and take the right steps. And like Kevin and I got married at four months, you know, but there were so many things that we knew for a fact right. that it was right. Right. Four months. So someone who's listening to us tonight, if tonight, if tomorrow's the day that you meet that someone in four months, it could be like that for you. Right. You don't know that you believe you attract, you, you knew what you wanted in life, how you wanted your life to be. It's important to envision the future, right? Not, not dwell on the things that are perhaps not working, but think about how you want the future to be. Always be in that next in that next step, right? As if, as if you're there, feeling the love and giving the love. You know, I, th I think that's a beautiful story because some people don't understand how, what the date or the time means. How long should you know one another? Well, you, you were married for 20 years, right? Right, yeah. Right, so you understand relationships. You have a good understanding of them. Right. Yeah. I think if you're a lot younger, then you should probably at least date a little bit longer to get to know each other because you're also still immature, right? When you've been married 20 years or for a long time, you know what you want. And that was it. He and I knew exactly what we wanted. And that was one of the big things too, is that I... Before I started dating, when I started praying for my husband, I wrote down all the, I am attracting a man who, and then fill in the blank. And I filled up a sheet of paper on the front and on the back. And I prayed over that list every single day, twice a day, when I woke up in the morning and before I went to bed at night. Mm. And now during that time, I was also working on myself 
because if you want to attract a man of the type of whatever caliber that you want, you have to be that too. Mm. Right. So you can't attract a very positive outgoing type man if you're negative Nancy over here. <laughs> right. So you have to be what you want to attract too. And then once I met him, well, one thing also is I prayed that God would tell me this is him the minute I laid eyes on him. And when I walked in, I felt like nothing mm -hmm. audible, right? But I just felt like something inside saying, this is him. And then I was like, oh, was that God? Could God do that? Well, of course we know God can do anything, right? But then it's, then you start second guessing yourself, right? But then I had, I mean, I had a list of probably a hundred questions that I asked him and because I knew what I wanted and the same thing, I didn't want to play the dating game. So I asked questions like the questions that you might not ask someone for a year. I asked within a day or two. And then I would re-ask the questions in a different way on a different day to see if I got the same answers. <laughs> so, but, so we did our, all our things of getting all our ducks in a row very quickly, but he was of that exact same mindset. He wanted to be married again, didn't want to play the dating game, but he knew what he wanted. Mm, you were aligned and you still are, you are aligned. And what an amazing couple. There's a beautiful picture behind you over your left shoulder, looking at you, your right shoulder of, of you and Kevin. And it, it really shows that picture, even from far away, shows the love and the commitment. We've gone through a lot together, right? We've, we've been doing different things in our lives and living in different places and attracting love. And I was so happy and am so happy to see that, to be part of this, as I would call it a bridge in your life, to have Kevin in your life and, and your, your new, your, your new existence, what you have created together and what you continue to create. And when you get to be part of that with someone, you, you feel that you know, right? Like you know a little bit more because when somebody meets you today, they see you for who you are, but when someone's with you and they get to experience watching the happiness that you have and well, where we talk to each other about everything. There isn't something that, anything that Lori and I don't talk to one another about. So we can come by this honestly and say, we really do know each other. There is no subject we can't talk about and there is no subject that we won't talk about because we both like to talk. <laughs> we both are there for one another. So when something happens, like we were saying the other day, it wouldn't matter what time of the day or night, we're there for one another. It makes no difference what time zone, where we are, we're there. And thank goodness for social media and thank goodness for technology that this allows us to be in each other's zone. So when I was married the first time, which was, let's see, um, 45, 44 years ago was the first time I was married. Wow, maybe it's 45 years ago. That was a long time ago. I was two. So when I got married the first time, <laughs> life was different. It was really different and you were chaperoned and to get to know your boyfriend at that time, you had your family around, you, you came to the table, you spoke to family, you went to each other's house for dinner if you were lucky to sit in front of the family, to interact, have conversations, like think about what I'm saying, have conversations around the dinner table there were no cell phones. If the phone rang, you got up from the table and you picked it up off the wall and you didn't do that during dinner. So when I met my first husband, we did what you do in the 70s. You get to know each other. You go out. If you're lucky, you go out alone 
or you go with friends. And if you visit each other's house, you sit with your family. And if you're a comedian, hopefully everybody laughs. And if you're an intellect, hopefully people are listening. And if you're neither of the two, the family is sitting there making their um, heartfelt opinion. So you were sort of on stage. You weren't alone with your device. You weren't alone in a room. You weren't alone with headphones, unless you were doing something with headphones. So we had a different exposure to how to build a relationship. So 44 years ago, when I, gosh, I met my, that my first husband when I was 15. I was 15 years old when I met him. So I was, think of a 15 year old today and imagine today meeting the person you're going to marry and then marrying them and then being in a, in a world where technology doesn't really exist. And then you, I've been married a few times. My husband that I married to right now was my second husband. And we got married twice during that marriage for religious reasons. So we consider that being married again. And then we got a divorce and we were divorced for 16 and a half years. And there wasn't a minute uh, in a day that I didn't know in my heart where my heart was. From the exterior, it might have looked different and to many people it did. But in my heart, it was always the same place. And when we got back together, and that was 15 years ago, and we got remarried, the world changed. In those 16 years, we knew each other in one world, became divorced and got back together in another world. Mm -hmm. And that's a bridge that you have to think about crossing. So the world changes, we changed. We changed a lot of things about ourselves. We lived differently over that time. And we came back together and decided that this was really what was meant for us. And sometimes you're exposed to criticism. Friends and family, people who love you have something to say as they normally do about things because they care about you. And in the end, really what matters is what's in your heart because it doesn't matter what the topic or the subject is. People who love you will always have something to say and that's great, hopefully they do. And you appreciate that and with gratitude, accept every word that people have to say, but you do what you have to do in your heart. So sometimes I feel like it was against all odds, but yet I couldn't imagine a minute or a day without the life that I had that led me to the moment that I'm in, because it would mean that I wouldn't be married to my husband. And I'll share just a bit about fate. We were complete strangers walking on the beach and I bumped into him, a hummingbird. I didn't even know really what a hummingbird was, sort of like went like this. And I thought it was something attacking me and I bumped into him like distracted. There's a big story to this, so I'll only tell you this part because we don't have two hours. And when I bumped into him and I saw him, I looked into his eyes and I knew at that exact second, just like you said, Lori, there was no question in my mind. There was not a thought in my mind. I did not understand how I lived in the United States. I lived in New York, Long Island, New York, and he lived in Canada. The how was not for me to figure out. We both knew. And I remember when we were we were at a vacation resort for kids. He had his children with him and I had my daughter with me. And I remember when you, you know, you leave on a bus to go to the airport on the island. That's how you do that. That's how you did it then. I remember when he left, I cried. And I thought, oh my goodness. And he <laughs> didn't see me cry, but a woman on the bus where he was saw me cry on the bus while I was back there saying goodbye. And he later told me that she told him, uh-oh, you're in trouble. Ah. 
because I didn't really want him to see me. I didn't know that anybody really could. It was, you know, sort of, and I remember thinking, I don't want him to go. I knew it was a vacation. I knew he was going to go. I knew. So that moment where your eyes meet, no one has to tell you anything and no one can tell you anything to unlock that feeling that you have when you're engaged with the person that you love with, when you're engaged with them on a, on a spiritual level and an emotional level, there's nothing anyone's going to say that's going to change your mind. Nothing mattered to me. He was exactly who I wanted him to be. And I was exactly who he wanted me to be. And nothing really matters. Nothing else matters. So if you're thinking about attracting love, believe it. Believe that it happens. And you know, right about here, between your heart and your stomach, you get a feeling and you know if it's right or wrong. Because, Lori, have you ever had a feeling where you're like, that's not right? Yeah. And no, no matter what the topic is, but if we stick to love, you know when it's not right. No matter how much you try to put your foot in that shoe, if it doesn't feel right, it you may wear it for a while, <laughs> but it's it's just not right. And it may take a day, a week, a month. Some people, it takes them 10 years to figure out when it's not right because you just don't want to face it. But have that hard conversation with yourself or call Lori or I and have that hard conversation with us because there are signs that you, we really need to know when it's not okay and that you're worth it. You're worth it and more to have exactly what you imagine in your life when it comes to love. There should be no exceptions to the rule on how you feel and how you treat people. Yeah, exactly. And and there should be no exceptions on getting all the right answers either, right? And that's it. If you want to move forward very quickly, you can, and there's ways to do it. And like I said, like, I had a list of questions and, you know, the same thing, if you hop on a call with us, we're happy to share those questions with you. And Catherine helped me with a lot of those questions too, you know, and I mean, Kevin was drilled by me, but also by Catherine through me. <laughs> and he didn't know that at the time. I love you, Kevin. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. But it's ways to find out and make sure that even though, like, I I knew, I knew in my heart of hearts, I knew on my insides, I knew everything was right. And he was the perfect and the right exact one. And we had so many different things that we had happen together on both sides, like he and I together, as well as he and I separately, that we were both confident that it was the right thing. But I still ask the questions because you still want to not just go by the feeling, right? You want to ask the questions and verify your feelings to get that solid answers and to be solid on that. And, and we, we've been through that. We've walked through that. We've done that. And, and then the same thing of being like Catherine mentioned, being aware of any of the red flags or that that feeling on your insides, like your solar plexus is right there, right? And so if you feel that in there, you know, a lot of times women say, you know, mother's intuition, women's intuition, God put that there in us and we should listen to it. Mm. A lot of times we don't, right? Or we bypass that you know, oh, that's brush it off. That's just a feeling. Be wary. <laughs> you need to listen to those feelings. You've got them for a reason. You know, you made me think about that's a, it's a really good point because when you're with the person that you love and you know that's the right person, you can basically tell them everything. Tell one another. If you can't have the hard conversations, if you don't agree on basic things. I'll use parenting as one. 
because it's a big topic. Health, your future. If you can't agree on certain things, how can you close your eyes, put all your trust into this person? And if they're not helping you to achieve what you want as a couple towards your couple goals and your own goals, if, if you're not in that together as a team, question that, you know, really think about it. It, it, it's not just a spouse. It's the person that you trust implicitly. It's unconditional love. And if you're not feeling that, and there are conditions and you don't agree on something like parenting or the way that you remain faithful to one another or whatever the topic is, if you don't agree on it, it might be a red flag. It might be difficult because I can tell my husband everything and he doesn't really bat an eyelash. He understands me. He knows what I want. He knows how I am and I can be myself and I don't have to worry about some judgment call. When I put a green face mask on, I take a picture and send it to him. And I say underneath that mask is a face that loves you like crazy. And that takes a lot of guts to do that. You know, really it takes a lot of confidence to be able to know that that's not something he's going to go, oh my gosh, what does she look like? I believe that it's probably not my best shot, but I do it with fun. <laughs> it's probably not my best look, but I just did it today. As a matter of fact, I was having face treatment and I had a mask and I thought, mm, how can I tell him I missed him? And I wrote, I love you on it and underneath this mask. I love you so much. And it's funny and you can do things with each other. And I think it's important to be able to have some humor and not take yourself too seriously. Right. Absolutely. You have to, you have to smile. You have to have fun. You have to enjoy life. Right. And, and if you are serious all the time, I mean, there's a time and place for everything, right? So there's a time and place to have the seriousness and the serious talks and the things, but there's also, you have to be flexible and you have to enjoy life and you have to be a little carefree, right? Mm -hmm. And because one, because life's too short to be have anything else. <laughs> right. Have the hard, yeah, I love that. Have the hard discussions, have the conversations with your partner, your husband, your wife, if you're watching and you're thinking about your wife, <laughs> ask them the tough questions and listen to the answer. Take the time to really hear what <clears throat> your husband and wife are saying to you. Don't just be silent. Listen. Maybe even repeat it back. Here's a technique. Don't talk at one another. Listen, repeat it back, and see if that's what they said. See if you're hearing it. See if, if the message is being communicated. I'll show my age. Remember that game, Telephone? Mm -hmm. <laughs> talking to a cup by the time the message got 10 people down it was nothing like the original one well that happens in real life today even with clear text messaging and voice messages so listen really carefully to your partner and when love finds you you're going to know it and if you want to talk about any of those tough questions or any of the signs that maybe you thought this was the one and it isn't well, if you can't speak to that person, they're probably not the right one. But, you know, that disclaimer is I'm not giving you marriage advice at this moment. I'm telling you our my we're telling you our story. But if you want to speak to us privately about something, we are absolutely very experienced in this area considering I've been married for 44 years <laughs> on and off. So I've spent most of my life married. <laughs> mm -hmm. more than single yeah and me too I I mean this time it's almost four years but the last time was 20 years so exactly that and you know but still the the thing is too like 
you have to have that communication, like Catherine just said, right? And so if you can't communicate, then there's an issue. If you're afraid to communicate, there's an issue. And it doesn't mean that if you're like already in a relationship, it doesn't mean that it has to be over either, right? But you need to learn how to communicate with the person. And that's one thing that Catherine and I can help you with also if you want to do that. And if you want to attract the person that you want in your life, then the same thing, reach out to us, go to facebook.com slash gratitude girls and hit to send us a message there. If you have any comments or questions, make sure to post them below the video, wherever you see this at on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, the podcast, wherever, and make sure to follow us. And give us a review if it was helpful, share it with a friend and let us know other topics that you want us to talk on because we talk on all kinds of topics. Every week we do different trainings on different topics. Yes. And Lori, I think it's a really great message that we believe in love and chemistry. And it started with us. And it's no surprise that you and I would keep attracting that in our life. So maybe if you rub elbows with the gratitude girls, because we are manifesting love and chemistry around us, then perhaps there's a few um, strategies that we can share with you. It's been fun tonight, Lori. I really enjoy talking about love and the things that make us happy. It's a it's a great a great part of our our show and our lives because for some people it's a problem, but if you look at it differently, maybe they could. Let me just share this. Can I get this? Maybe, yeah. Maybe you could write in your journal the things that you want to manifest and the things that you're grateful for, and um, let us know because we've given you a tool that you can use to attract the love in your life. Yes, absolutely. And thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Thank we'll you. We'll see you next time. Have a good night. Ciao.